this week on In The Loop. We talk about chronic pain. You may look good, but how do you feel? We explore the world of microbreweries and the expansion of one local business. And Farron interviews a special guest before they make their trip down to Wagga. This is In The Loop. <laughs> Greetings, salutations, and welcome to In The Loop, bringing you news from around the globe and social media. I'm your host, Nathan Keevan, and as always, joining us tonight is the beautiful Alex Leon. <laughs> and the handsome man himself, Denver Nordia. <laughs> but of course, we mustn't forget our very special guest panellists tonight. We are joined by the exceptionally talented Kate Bannigan. Now, guys, how are, we, how are we feeling this week? Big show tonight. Yeah, great. Yeah, We've got good, a good, lot good. going on. Yeah. 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 Well, oh, yeah, sounds, sounds pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, we've got a lot to cover this week, so uh, a lot more than our last episode, so we'll get straight, we'll get the ball rolling straight away. First up, making news this week, on Sunday, Chinese scientists began operation on the world's largest radio telescope, embarking upon a journey which officials say will help humanity to search for alien life. Built at a cost of $180 million, the 500-metre Aperture Spherical Radio Telescope, or FAST for short, is situated in the mountainous region of Gaizhou. The reflector dwarfs all other radio telescopes worldwide in comparison, with a reflection surface area equal to approximately 30 football fields. Before we get much further into this story, let's explain how a radio telescope works. Unlike a conventional optical telescope, which relies on the capture of light to display an image, such as this one on your screen, a radio telescope captures radio waves from space by means of a parabolic dish that reflects and focuses the waves to central radio receivers. These signals are then amplified and sent to a computer memory disk to be interpreted and analysed by astronomers. Just as most objects in space can reflect or emit light, these same objects also emit radio waves, which can also be interpreted to visualise and study ex extraterrestrial bodies. By their nature, these telescopes can also be used in the broadcast of video and audio. Probably the most famous example of this type of transmission came through the Parkes Radio Telescope here in Australia back in 1969, as the dish was used to capture the live broadcast footage of the Apollo 11 moon landing, bringing it to the TV sets of millions of viewers this immortal clip. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh, In comparison to the dish, however, China's new telescope dwarfs ours by a factor of almost 8 to 1. At just 64 metres across, the Parkes Radio Telescope fades to a merely a blip in comparison to the fast. China hopes that this new ambitious program will help revitalise its multi-billion dollar space program with future goals including a permanent orbiting space station by the year 2020 and eventually further manned missions to the moon. Guys, is it just me or is this sounding a bit like Star Wars? Okay, <laughs> um, this is incredible. This is incredible yeah. stuff. Uh, extra extraterrestrial life um, is obviously something that we've been looking into for quite right. some time. Um, is it necessary though? What do we think, guys? I'm Sorry, I think, oh, it's, I think it's a really interesting scientific feat. Like as much as we can put money into things going on on Earth, sometimes you have to take a risk. Make Why some not? expansion. Yeah, because uh, it's so we'll, small. We'll They're so small. There's so much out there. Like when you look at the Milky Way and stuff, like tiny little. <laughs> I can't even explain it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Denver, what do you think? I can see the intrigue, but by the mm. same token, um, I can also understand how putting multi-billion dollars into your, your um, space program can kind of seem a bit fleeting when you have a ma massive poverty issue in, in China and also in other mm. places around yeah, the world. It's yeah, it's something it's, to think about as it's well. It's a very good point that maybe, you know, we need to start focusing on ourselves before we look elsewhere. Mm. Obviously, it's something that we'll look into a bit later on in the future, but for now, let's focus on ourselves. Our next story tonight comes from Melbourne, where a nail artist has been using snakeskin, butterfly wings, and even dead scorpions to make quite a stir. Now, Alex, you have all the details for us. 
I do. So, owner of the Deadly Nail Salon, Nicole Casti, has for a while now utilised anything from sprinkles to marijuana in customers' nails and has gathered considerable support for her work, posting pictures of the salon's various creations onto social media. But in recent weeks, however, Miss Casti has now received a considerable backlash towards her work, with many concerned over the salon's use of animals and animal parts. Miss Casti has insisted that all her specimens have been sourced from a licensed taxidermist in Queensland or donated to her by customers. Despite the opposition that she's meeting online, Miss Cassidy wants to push on experimenting with her nail art in the attempt to create things that challenge people's perception of beauty. So what do you guys think? I think like it's definitely like it's something it's new. Like little scorpions. I've seen videos actually and pictures on Facebook and it looks really cool. Mm. Um, but obviously touchy. I, I'm I'm kind of confused about the backlash that it's receiving because if it, is it just me or have we been making croc bags for Mm. Years now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, fur That's coats true. and stuff. Are people going to start seeing people with these nails and throw red paint <coughs> on people's hands? You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I mean, this sort of thing has been happening for years, and now all of a sudden it gets put into a, a nail artist's hands. They want to do something creative, and it's being. Yeah, like I personally don't yeah, think it's that bad, but everyone's going to have an issue with something. Like, there's it, never yeah. going to be, you know. I think a lot of people would just end up doing the cheaper version of her stuff, and mm. I think that's why they get the backlash is because people cut corners and get cheaper things and. Bad things happen. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Do you, well, how much is she pricing this? You know, is it quite an expensive venture to get these sorts of materials? Yeah, I mean, I'm, how 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 available are scorpions? You know? yeah. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> but uh, on a more serious note now, and uh, I think I'm right in saying that most of us would say that we have had struggles in our lives that we live with every day, but not quite in the same way that Kate is about to explain. Most illnesses are easy to spot or are publicised enough for people to actively discuss. However, there's one illness that manages to fly under the radar. Out of sight and out of mind. Chronic pain isn't like the flu, it doesn't go away, there often isn't a cure, and it's a condition that affects one in five Australians. There are no visible signs to chronic pain, meaning the issue often goes undiscussed. To clarify, chronic pain is defined as pain that lasts longer than 12 weeks, and is a mal malfunction of the body's nervous system that continues to alert the body to pain even when there's no discernible cause or reason. Even in the professional medical world, there's still a lot of misunderstanding and confusion surrounding chronic pain, leading, a numerous, leading to numerous misdiagnoses around the world annually. After being diagnosed with a chronic headache at the age of 13, I can let you know firsthand that for those living with chronic pain, there's a process, process that comes with accepting that you might be in pain for the rest of your life. Initially, there are severe medical costs that come with the numerous appointments for tests, second opinions, and finally treatments. On top of that, pain med medications may need to be administered daily. Also contribute to what soon turns from not, not only a lifelong physical struggle, but a financial burden as well. Sufferers have to fight harder than regular people just to function normally in society. Inherently, there also comes a change of lifestyle once you live with chronic pain. Sufferers with chronic pain tend to wear out faster emotionally and physically, meaning hobbies and pastimes soon get pushed to the back burner in favour of rest and recovery. This, reduces life, this reduced lifestyle can also take a psychological toll, as sufferers battle with the notion of not being able to function at their full capacity. Some days are easier than others, but there are organisations built around supporting those with chronic pain and raising awareness in the community. Here's what National Pain Week ambassador Michael Clark has to say on the matter. You can't see chronic pain, it's invisible. One in five Australians live with it every day. This pain really affects relationships, ability to work, and feel part of a community. Check in with your friends and family. You look good, but how do you feel? For those interested in learning more after the show, you can visit Chronic Pain Australia's website for more information and support. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Kate, for sharing that. Now, obviously, you, obviously that's your story. Um, it's quite a, a sad one. Um, so how did it come about? You know, you said the diagnosis for chronic pain syndrome is quite tough. So how did, it, how did, it, how did you get to that conclusion? Um, it's not necessarily just a diagnosis. It's kind of one of those things that they don't have a label for you. So they'll say, we'll just name it chronic pain because sometimes you don't have the ability to go, oh, it's caused by this. So okay. therefore, chronic pain is kind of the branch under not explained. Okay, very interesting. You think you yeah. think something that affects one in five Australians would have um, you'd have a lot, a much larger knowledge base in terms yeah. of medical um, resources and stuff 
if it's one in five, I mean, that's, mm. you know, that's, a lot that's of insane. And well, I know much even, even myself, I don't discuss it much because it's a bit of a downer topic. Even to bring it on the show, I was a bit concerned because people don't normally like to talk about things that like they can't do anything about. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that you find that can help you with it? or um, Not particularly. Um, I try and get in front of it and on top of it. So I, I see things like people like um, it's like chiropractors once mm. a week and things like that. Yeah. It'd be so expensive. Yeah. 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 It's particularly on a uni, uni student's budget. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's an interesting topic to bring up because we just spoke about, um, you know, space, investing in space mm. science, you know, mm. but what about medical science? I feel like in some ways it is sometimes underappreciated and this is something that I'd like to touch on later in maybe the show or maybe next week. Mm. Mm. It's a lot to think about though, isn't it? Going into our first break, I mean, that telescope is an amazing feat of science, but on the other hand, looking at chronic pain and the limits of science there, it's a very different world that some people live in. The juxtaposition of being able to explore the cosmos and then having to explain to a 13-year-old girl that, hey, you might just have a headache for the rest of your life. So yeah, it's quite quite a dis dis disturbing situation. Um, coming up after the break, we'll show you what's trending and why Wagga's Thirsty Crow is so important to the future of beer production in Australia. See you soon. <laughs> flushes that confuse you. I am the tightening of your chest. I am the snowballing worries that become an avalanche. So, do you think you know me? Meet the Freemans. Mum loves comedy. <laughs> Jen loves reality. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dougie loves drama. Which is why they all love Freeview. It gives them more choice of the best TV absolutely free. And Dad, Dad likes to be in control with Catch Up TV on Freeview Plus. Just pick a channel, will you? So, are you keeping up with the Freemans? Find out at freeviewplus.com.au or your local TV retailer. Wait till you graduate. At CSU, you're not just learning it, you're living it. Hello everyone and welcome back from connecting with friends to immersing yourself in cat videos. The internet is indeed a perfect place. Nathan. Oh. Per perfect. <laughs> <laughs> They just host the show, they said. Last week, we looked at marriage equality and Skittles, but this week, uh, the topics are a little bit lighter. And first up, we have Tom Hanks' latest public display of kindness. This week, a young couple in New York were getting their wedding photos taken in Central Park when suddenly a familiar face appeared. Tom Hanks himself stopped and introduced himself to the couple, offering his congratulations and sincerest wishes for the couple's marriage. Hanks posed for a few photos and after grabbing a selfie for himself, went on his merry way, leaving the happy couple to continue their celebrations. Next up, we have a little more science for you. Elon Musk, the mastermind and founder of both Tesla and SpaceX, has made an exciting announcement regarding the future of manned space flights. As CEO of SpaceX, Musk revealed on Tuesday the Interplanetary Transport System, SpaceX's latest machine designed to incorporate the most powerful rocket ever built into an interplanetary vehicle capable of carrying at least 100 people to Mars in a single trip. If all goes according to Musk's plan, the reusable ITS will enable humans to establish a self-sustaining colony of 1 million individuals on the red planet within the next 50 to 100 years. When fully assembled on the launch pad, the ITS will stand at 122 metres tall, making it the world's largest spaceflight system ever built, even taller than NASA's Saturn V rocket, used during the Apollo space program that sent man to the moon. To make the, more journey, to make the journey more attractive to the potential travellers, Musk has promised zero-G games, movies and a restaurant on board to cater to the trip that he claims could take as little as 80 days to complete. 
He's also promising potential travellers the opportunity to return to Earth once they arrive on the surface of Mars. As for who these potential travellers could be, the ITS program is likely to be a re realistic possibility for anyone interested, as Elon wants to make the space flight as exciting and accessible as possible. And finally, the following video has surfaced of singer Pico Taro, a fictional character invented by the Japanese comedian and DJ Kosaka Daimu. <laughs> The character, who sports leopard print clothing and a pencil moustache, was first introduced into the comedian's live performance, but grew in popularity to the point that Kasaka developed him into a full character, and thanks to the song's catchy nature, Pen Pineapple Apple Pen has become one of the most covered parodies of the year. Alright guys, open to you. What do you guys think of our trending topics this week? I don't, I don't even know if I want to talk about the third topic, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm just being honest, I really, I, I just don't know. Um, but uh, I do want to go back to the first story. Uh, Tom Hanks, uh, you think you can just crash a wedding, okay? Uh, it's an interesting... Well, has he not? I can't just crash I, a wedding, can I? I think it's awesome. And then he full on, like, I watched the video last night, and he full on gets his phone out and he's like, oh, can I get a selfie too? So... What a lad. Well, why not? I mean, I mean, it's, it's great to see a celebrity go out of his way like that. Uh, Denver, uh, Elon Musk, I believe I finally pronounced his name right. Uh, um, so what, what's his backstory? Oh, well, I mean, he's, he's done a lot of very interesting things. He's uh, started from, from quite, a, quite a like low socioeconomic state, built up to $13 billion value. That's wow. what it's worth, which is insane. Wow. Uh, is bought himself a McLaren P1 and totaled it. Well, wow. um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, Tesla, electric cars, and then <laughs> SpaceX, obviously, big things. And Kate, P Pap or P <laughs> something, whatever it is, I don't know. The Pineapple. third one. <laughs> Lots of pens and fruit, yes. Yeah. Um, but internet loves annoying things yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah, just bring back Sai. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Just bring back Sai. Okay. <laughs> now, also, guys, uh, don't forget if you'd like to have your say on all of these topics, you can voice your opinion through our Twitter handle at In the Loop CSU. Now, it's an Aussie tradition to sit down at the end of a hard day's work and enjoy maybe a pint or seven. But this week, Alex went to a well known brewery, the Thirsty Crow, to investigate more into the wonderful world of beer. <clears throat> That's right, this week I got the chance to meet the genius behind Wagga's most famous brewery, Craig Whelans, whose family-owned business has become a Wagga landmark in the last five years since its opening in 2011. He talked me through the basics of what it takes to run a successful brewery and his plans to deliver even more local brewed beer to the residents of Wagga and the Riverina. The Thirsty Crow's weird but wonderful craft beers attract locals and visitors alike, pushing the boundaries of acceptable to tiptoe around the edge of crazy. But somehow, it all works. The brains behind the operation is Craig Whelans, the owner and head brewer at Thirsty Crow, who founded the brew pub in 2011 and has steered it to success ever since. Craig encourages his staff to learn about every aspect of the business, with a couple of his employees having already started their training to become a part of Thirsty Crow's brewing team. We opened in February 2011 and it's a family business, so it was myself and my mum and dad that uh, funded the brewery to open up. The inspiration of it was uh, through myself working in breweries uh, for five years prior to that, um, seeing that there was an opportunity in the market in Wagga. Oh, I love craft beer, so I genuinely have a strong passion for it. I love that, you know, you can produce something that can be so flavourful and people will be talking about it for weeks on end. You know, on our Facebook feed, four of the biggest search words, two of those words, is called liquid bacon. It tastes like you're licking Miss Piggy. It's a smoky, bacony beer. Craft beer creates an opportunity to become then a point of conversation, which is all a pub and drinking is all about is to socialise. We produce 40,000 litres of beer a year at the brew pub and we sell about 100,000 litres on tap. So there's a shortfall of 60,000 litres. So we fill that by bringing in other guest beers. We'll continue to do that, but at least with our expansion, we'll be able to brew another 150,000 litres. So that will be able to serve our brew pub as well as there'll be some excess to can to bottle and also to sell into Sydney and Melbourne and that's the purpose of the additional tanks we'll be able to brew 30 different beers throughout the year as opposed to the six that we're limited to currently. How we train um, bar people or or anybody to become brewers um, there's a mix between the science and the craft and definitely the love of, of craft beer. So a starting point for us is there's a few recognised base level courses so everyone can get on the same level. So that's the Cicerone course that's based in America. 
that we get everyone to, to do. Then hands on deck, you know, our, our lab pretty much consists of sensory work, so visual and sensory and tasting. So the more that you can do of that, which is a good part of the job, um, the more that you become experienced in, in regards to ingredients and processes. So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely ours in the brewery and being part, of the, being part of the process that they get better knowledge from. So if you'd like to sample some of the unique craft beers here in Wagga, be sure to check out the Beers and Gears Festival this weekend and meet Craig and the team behind the Thirsty Crow. Yeah, awesome guy, Craig. Um, Thirsty Crow, come on, if, you've, if you live in Wagga, you're a uni student, you've been there, am I uh, right? Yeah, only, only once or twice, I can't say I've been there too often. Um, <laughs> yes, no, I've, I've, nice I've ventured one. to the Thirsty Crow many times. Uh, uh, great beers, you know, you've got your pale ales, mm. your stouts, very, many different types of beers, and also great meal selection, pizzas. Oh, and, oh, their pizzas yeah. have, they have a pizza called Roast Slam, and it's honestly like Sunday roast. It's a Sunday, oh my God, have you guys had it? <laughs> I right, have yeah. had the Sunday roast, but it is amazing. nice. Also, right. for those of you that don't enjoy beer so much, mm. First of all, grow up. Um, <laughs> second of all, there is a, quite an extensive and attractive yeah. wine list at the Thirsty Crow, mm. interestingly enough, so um, you can go there and enjoy that as well. Yeah. Yep, and so, uh, like Craig said, Thirsty Crow are going to be involved with Beers and Gears this weekend, so be sure if you want to go meet uh, Craig and the team and check out some of their craft beers, be sure to head down to Beers and Gears this weekend and say hi. Yeah, it's almost become a, a bit of a staple, uh, mm. Thirsty Crow, for the Wagga residents. It's, mm. yeah, yeah, it's quite prominent. Sure. <laughs> Okay, guys, it's time to focus on something else. Uh, there's one presenter that we're yet to hear from tonight, and that's our cunning field reporter, Farron Bish. Farron, how are you? Where are you? And what do you have for us tonight? Hey, guys, I hope you're nice and warm in the studio because I'm out here on this beautiful spring evening in Wagga Wagga. <laughs> but coming up, I have a special secret guest. So stick around for that. Can't wait to hear more about that. And uh, I think we'll see you soon. <laughs> There's many different ways that you hear I have cancer, whether it's a friend, a family member, whether it's a work colleague, but eventually in our lives we will hear those words. I'm here, but I lost many people. I lost my mum and I lost um, my best friend's twin sister last year and that who, all her family are walking today. I'm so sorry, I thought there was time. He just pulled out. I don't have time to stop. Well, come on, mate. I mean, it was a simple mistake. I don't know if I was going a bit slower. But... Please. I've got my boy in the back. I'm going too fast. I'm sorry. again everyone and if you're just joining us or you'd like to see anything again from tonight's episode you can go to our YouTube channel where we will be uploading a high quality copy of each of our episodes so uh, make sure you check that out but uh, now before the break Farron didn't want me to didn't want to tell us much about her adventures this week uh, Farron I'm sure I'm right in saying that we're all dying to know who you got to talk to this week uh, can you tell us more this week I sat down to a nice cup of tea and a Skype chat with an old friend of mine about their upcoming trip to Wagga Wagga. Check it out. Oh, I didn't see you there. I was just about to call my old friend on Skype. Why did you join me? Yeah, there you hey, go. How are you going? 
Good, how you going, mate? Pretty good. So, tell me why you first started making YouTube videos. Firstly, I was, um, I started making videos online because I just wanted to lose my virginity. Right. And still hasn't helped, yeah, but fingers crossed one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> well, maybe when you get to 200 or something, you'll lose your virginity. Who knows? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep trying. You never know. I've got a, I've got an uncle who's pretty handy, so who knows? <laughs> good luck. <laughs> You've reached a few people with your videos. Did you ever expect to get that much attention? No, 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 no. Of course, I used to be a teacher, and so I just started making these videos while I was teaching, and then um, and then they got a few views, and then I was a bit, I was as surprised as you. I didn't think they would get so many views, but did any of your students see your video? Yeah, that's why I had to quit teaching slash oh, I lost right. my teaching. They didn't really approve. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love got my teaching license suspended because it got to the point where all the students would have seen them and they're like, we're not doing work in the class unless you watch the videos with us. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. get the views up, it's fine. So did um, any of the parents have complaints about your videos? Yeah, that was a few complaints. <laughs> but you do a bit of stand-up as well? Well, I started out off doing stand-up in 2009, 2008. I started doing stand up comedy and then it went nowhere and then I made a few videos and now I can tour a little bit but so yeah I've been doing stand up for a while and I enjoyed it even more than the videos because yeah. it's nice being being live and being able to interact with some some drunk bogans in the crowd mm -hmm. or whoever I need Most people know your stand up because they know you from your YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that so how important is your online presence to your career. Oh, it's it's essential. It's how it's how I sell tickets. It's how I people will come to see my show. They like a video like, oh I'll give him a chance live, let's go spend twenty bucks on him and <laughs> without the videos I don't think I think I'd still be teaching or I'd be well I'd probably be still be suspended but You got a lot of people like yelling out. They all thought it was their show as well. That just happens. I people just get drunk and want to yell yeah, stuff they just at want me. To fight you or something. <laughs> It's like I'm teaching again. <laughs> I'm like, Shut up, you little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got your new series out, the Australiana Hostel. I saw the first two episodes of that, and I love it. It's so funny. So you're working on that with Tom from the Roundabout Crew. Yes, yeah, that's. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm with Tom and the other boys from Roundabout Crew. How about two? And we and we wrote a, a few episodes. We've got a hundred k to make these three. Yeah, you got episodes. funding from Screen Australia. How did you go about doing that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so my character in it is this guy who, who works in a hostel. He's just trying to um, sleep with as many foreign girls as he can because Australian girls don't like him. Love you too much, Schnitzel. So that's nothing like me at all. No, <laughs> I'm very... Of course. I'm the opposite of that. It's acting, just acting for that one. So when are you actually coming to Wagga Wagga? I think... What date is it today? Like the 5th? Yeah. Is that next week? The 5th of October? Yeah, yeah, that's like next week. Next week. Oh, Wednesday night's good. Wednesday nights are uni nights, so everyone's gonna be out <laughs> smashing off their faces. So it's gonna be that's a great good. night. We'll all come see you. Where are you playing? The Civic Theatre? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't know? Yeah. I think it's the Civic <laughs> Theatre. <laughs> Civic Theatre, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Next Wednesday. We'll I put some that. details up on the screen here, right now, or something. Um, can you see all that stuff back there? Yeah, you know the Listerine and stuff. <laughs> don't even use that. I don't know why. I, <laughs> I don't know. It um, gives the impression that you have a uh, good oral, oral hygiene. That's I'll put that thing. on my Tinder profile for Wagga. Use Listerine. <laughs> Maybe they'll sponsor you after they watch this video. They do not want to be associated with me. <laughs> yeah, you got a bit of a dirty mouth. Oh, use Listerine for a dirty mouth. That's, f that's cool. That's <laughs> <laughs> a slogan. I'm into my for sure. 13 bucks I'll do it for, 13, oh, 13 50 I reckon. Well, thanks so much for talking to me today. My pleasure, thank you for having me. And I'll come see you when you're here in Wagga. Awesome, I'll see you then. Bye. I don't know how to hang up. <laughs> Isn't it nice catching up with old friends? You too can catch up with Frenchie at the Wagga Civic Theatre this Wednesday at 8pm for less than the price of two goon sacks. Three goon sacks. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Farron, for that uh, interesting interview. And obviously, thank you to Frenchie for giving up his time so Farron could give 
you know, do an interview with him. Uh, quite an interesting fellow, isn't he? Mm, uh, yeah. Very funny, very so funny. He's so funny. I love him. Yeah, I've seen a few of his uh, videos online, and uh, it'll be interesting to see his stand-up. I've never really seen his stand-up performance, so he'll be coming to Wagga well, next Wednesday night. So, any of you guys going to go check him out? Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. I'm going yeah. to head to that. 108. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, so he's... Um, very uh, funny in the in the way of uh, very quick witted, very imp- improvisational humour, which uh, Denver, I know you'd lack. Um, so, <laughs> oh, oh, come on! Oh, I mean, no, I mean, oh God, I'm sorry, I had to bust someone on this episode. I mean, it's, it's it just goes to show that he sat out, you know, with a couple of friends making yeah. some videos. Look, you can get to Frenchie, open up in uh, Wagga. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, like the Interloop cast is going to be there, so I mean, yeah. why wouldn't you go? Yeah. Maybe, yeah, you meet us as well. Uh, not I mean, not, not a good famous? idea. No one. Okay, no one. No one really cares. <laughs> but all right, guys. Um, so we're gonna have to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much, Farron, for that unexpected mm-hmm. brush with fame. Just quickly, is there any word yet on what you'll be bringing us next week? I love keeping secrets from you guys, so I'm not gonna tell you. You'll just have to watch again next week. Oh, come on, Farron, do that to us. We'll catch you later, though. See you, Farron. <laughs> And with that, our show is again coming to an end. As always, I'd love to thank our panelists for tonight, Alex Leon. Devin Nord, <laughs> Devin Nord, and Kate Bannigan. Oh, jeez. And I'd also like to thank our lovely studio audience. You guys are what makes this show so fun and really enjoyable for all of us here. So thank you. If you still haven't conformed to overwhelming peer pressure, remember to hit the like button on our Facebook page to keep up to date with all things in the loop. And remember, if you guys have any comments for us, recommendations or stories that you'd like us to cover, you can tweet us at InTheLoopCSU. Well, until next week, you've been kept in the loop. Catch you then.